Hey everybody, this is our first demo and I just want to make a note before we begin that during these film demos I'm going to be unmasked. Uh, this is not permission for you to be unmasked during this process or really any process uh, in this studio. It's just in service of making the demo videos more intelligible. Welcome to your Alginate demo. This is um, a process where we use a material called alginate, which is this sort of pinkish powdery stuff to take castings off of our bodies because it is body safe, as well as uh, castings of objects that we want to then transform into glass. For this demo, we're going to do both of those things. So I'm gonna take an alginate cast of my hand, and I'm also gonna take an alginate cast of this cute little plastic cup. Um, we cast the objects in alginate, we let the alginate sit up, then we yank the objects out and fill that void with wax, and then we can use the wax to make molds off of, and then glass. Um, the way this demo is gonna go is that we are going to talk about the materials that you're gonna wanna grab for this process. Then we're going to actually go through the processes. Um, so for the materials, uh, I'm going to, I, ha I have most things here. I'm also just gonna point over here to where the alginate lives next to the plaster silica mixing table. You're also gonna want to get um, at least three buckets which live over on the bucket shelf. We'll talk about um, how many buckets you need and also the mixing procedure when we get to the demo. You're also going to want um, tools for mixing. So I prefer mixing by the electric mixer. We have two of these objects and they live above the updraft table. You can also choose to mix manually with a paint stir, which live in the consumables cabinet or mix by hand. The other things that you might wanna gather are your wax working tools from your toolkit which might help if you need to affix your object before you, um, before you pour your alginate. I also grabbed some plastilina from the yellow consumables cabinet, which will be the tool that I use to affix. I also grabbed uh, one of our tubs of Vaseline. This is good if you're planning on casting a part of your body that has a lot of hair growing out of it. So then you can rub Vaseline to sort of smooth the hairs down and then you won't be giving yourself a waxing spa treatment. Um, it's really not that bad if you don't use Vaseline, but, um, but there could be moments of discomfort. The first demo that we'll do is the body casting. Um, probably the simplest part of your body to do is an appendage because you can just dunk it in. Though in class we'll talk more about, um, more about doing things like part of your face, or if you wanted to do um, sort of a, a flatter casting, we can talk about that too. Um, but just to start us off, we're just gonna do our hands, our hands, I'm gonna do my hand. Um, so what I'm gonna do is have the Vaseline at the ready. And I'm going to do, sorry, I wanna do like just a, a stern, you better do these demos correctly hand. All right, so let's talk about the mixing and the vessels that you need. You'll notice that we did a cut and I changed some things because I realized I had the wrong vessels picked out. But basically, um, you want a vessel that can consume or sort of hold the object that you want to cast. So this is deep enough and maybe just a little too wide, but a decent size. And I will think, and I think that for any sort of hand casting, one of these um, two and a half quart buckets is a good size. But we also have lots of little disposable cups in the consumables cabinet. And I also invite you to bring your own vessel if you have a specific thing that you want to cast, um, especially if it is something sort of tall and long, because what I don't want to see is a waste of material by doing something tall and long in a giant bucket, because that's, um, that's just not cool. <laughs> so what you're going to need is a bucket big enough to cast your object in. For me, it's my naughty pointer finger. So because alginate is a one-to-one -one mix by volume, I'm going to fill up this bucket with alginate and fill up this bucket with water. I'm going to know that it's one-to-one -one because they're both gonna be filled to the lid. And I also am gonna know that, or sorry, to the lip. 
And I'm also gonna know that that's the right amount because alginate doesn't actually add that much, um, that much mass to the, to the liquid or to, to the mix, excuse me. So when I submerge my hand in here, there's just going to be a little bit extra. I also am going to have a third bucket ready that is bigger than my submerging bucket. So if my submerging bucket is this two and a half quarts because it fits my hand, I'm gonna grab one of these five quart mixing buckets to mix because this will um, reduce mess considerably. So grab three buckets, two that are the right size for submerging and one that's bigger for mixing. You're gonna get water from the sink. I like to fill up a pitcher with water so I don't have to go back and forth all the time. And I'm gonna fill up one of my smaller buckets with water and I'm gonna fill it right to the brim, maybe half an inch below. And then I'm going to take my bucket that I'm gonna fill with alginate over to the alginate station. And I'm gonna fill it over there because it will reduce mess and, um, and it will prevent me from um, getting any water or anything in the alginate. So always make sure that the bucket that you bring over to the alginate is clean and dry. You don't have to come, you'll just see what happens. <laughs> So I'll just describe it from off camera. I'm filling a bucket with alginate. It's very exciting. I'm working hard not to spill any on the floor. And I've succeeded. So now my bucket is filled with alginate. I have filled it sort of fluffy. If there are any bakers out there, it's like not compacting your flour because there's no need. Um, so that's pretty good one-to-one. -one. It is not an exact science and that's fine. So now what I'm going to do, and this is an important step, is that I'm gonna take my water bucket and pour that into my mixing bucket. And then that can go off to the side. I'm not gonna need that again. I'm going to plug my uh, electric drill in. It's not a drill, an electric mixer. <laughs> So now that's plugged in and I'm going to put in the little mixing blades. There are uh, little notches in the blades that I'm gonna line up with the notch holes and it will audibly click to lock in. And that's what you're gonna wanna hear because otherwise you're gonna send your mixing blades, you know, flying across the room when you turn it on, click. And then I'll do a little check, it looks good. So I'm gonna hold the mixer in my right hand and the alginate in my left. And I'm just going to go a little bit at a time. It's going to puff up some alginate. When you do this, the updraft will be on, so it'll pull it away from you. So it's been mostly consumed. I'm going to do the next dump. Probably do this in two or three. Give it a little stir. going to the first setting of mixing so I can get it all mixed up and then once the powder has been sort of partially mixed I'll go a little faster. can see that it's sort of all consumed but there's still some lumpy chunkies so now I'm going to mix until it's looking like a really well blended milkshake
can see we've got very few lumps and it has this really beautiful texture. I'm just gonna spin off a little bit of the alginate here. And then I'm just gonna set this down. The alginate is much, much easier to clean after it's been set. So I'm just gonna leave that mess accumulating. Trust me. All right, so now I've got my original alginate bucket. It has a little dust in it, so I might just tap that out. But there's nothing else you need to do to prep the bucket. I'm gonna take a little bit of Vaseline and just rub it on my hands. I don't want my hands necessarily to be wet, but I think that just a little release sometimes makes things better. I'm gonna practice my hand motion, just make sure it fits. And then all at once, I'm going to pour and submerge. And there's gonna be a little extra and that's fine. I'm also just gonna let that set and then Walk with me over to the demo table where I think it'll be a little easier to see what's going on. So I'm in my position. I'm gonna wiggle my hand just a little bit and then I'm gonna dunk and submerge. I'm gonna feel for the bottom and then I'm gonna lift up a little bit. I'm gonna dunk and submerge. And it, this is allowing any bubbles that have accumulated on the surface of my skin to, um, to pop. So. Just simply dunk and submerge. Again, sort of feeling for the bottom. If I touch the bottom, the wax is gonna pour through. So I need the alginate to be completely surrounding my hands. I don't want my hands to touch the side of my vessel or the bottom. And then this is gonna be noisy. I'm either gonna bang on the table or bang on the vessel. With a hand, banging on the vessel is fine because I'm not going to delodge anything that's stuck. But I'm just encouraging any bubs. That's shop talk for bubbles, in case you were wondering. <laughs> to, um, to release off of my skin and then also off of my our, our sort of rise up. And now we're going to pause the video. I'm going to wait. The alginate has an eight minute pot life which means that from the moment that it mixes up to the moment that it seizes is the, um, is the time. So I'll see you in about eight minutes. Yeah. All right, so it has been um, probably eight minutes since we started mixing and you can see that the alginate has totally set and there are lots of bubbles on top, so that's good to see. Another good way to, to make sure that it's set is that like anything that's, um, that's fallen on the table, has like turned into this really cool silly putty quality. So I'm ready to remove my hand. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just start to wiggle and use my other hand to start to free myself from the material. So I'm sort of gently pulling away. It's all very, uh, it's all very gentle. If there's really thin stuff up against the um, where your body meets the alginate, you can sort of pull it away or get a butter knife if you're feeling, you know, safe. And then I'm gonna start wiggling my fingers gently. And the thing that gets you out of this mold is making an air gap. So it's not attached to you by any sort of mechanical way, like the material has grabbed onto you, but instead it's just sort of vacuumed to you. So you'll feel this sort of pleasant <laughs> suck and pop. And just do it nice and slow. You're gonna be, or whomever's hand or body is in here is going to be um, the guide in terms of making that work. Cool, that was really a beautiful exit. And so you can see that my hand just has like a little bit of residue on it, but nothing too crazy. And then Madeline, if you want to point into the mold, mm -hmm. you can see that um, the surface is really sort of, well, I don't know how well you can see in the mold, mm -hmm. but, um, but so, so that's demolding. Mm -hmm. 